Hey guys, welcome back. This is Valve on Dreamlight. In today's video, I'm going to show you a cool lighting trick I use all the time to control how lighting falls in your scene. And here you can see a scenery uh, which is a co op uh, between me and Jason from To Create. And as you can see, I placed a lot of shadows in the scene to make it kind of dark around the edges and kind of focus the lighting a little bit more on the center and also on the uh, figure up here, right? The cold statue in the background. Now, in order to achieve this, it's not always possible if you don't have enough height in your scenes. Maybe easy if you have a city scenery or something like that, but if you have a scenery that doesn't have so much height, it can be difficult to create those kind of shadows. Let me show you. If I remove now the cool trick, I call it sound blocker. The scenery no longer appears to be that dark. Instead, there is lighting hitting everywhere, right? And that kind of takes away a little bit. It takes away the mystery, the fun, if you will. And this is something I talk about all the time. If you have large areas, they tend to steal attention, especially if they grab a lot of lighting. So, one thing you can do, which is very easy and very quick, is to add sun blockers. These are huge cubes and I've just made them invisible. Let me just turn them back on. Huge simple cubes that I place in front of the sun so that it casts cool shadows. All right. So let me show you how this works with a very simple scene. I just have a plane and a cube here and we got some sunshine coming through. And how do we go by now and block off the sun? Well, we add a cube primitive. The size I go usually with is 10 meters. You can always scale this up and down, depending on the size of your scene. And I'm now gonna switch over to here. So I see the NVIDIA I preview here in my auxiliary viewport. And I'm also gonna just use uh, hidden line here so I have more like a wireframe preview on this side now I'm going to grab my cube wireframe I can grab my cube now and use translate to just move it out of place now what you want to do is uh, start with being very close to the item you want to uh, you know shade and the reason being is that it can be a little bit tricky at times to get this right. And uh, let me just throw in the real camera to our scene. And I want to just turn off the headlamp. So I only have the light now coming from, from above. As an extra thing, if you want to, you can always go to the surfaces of that primitive and just black it that means it will not react to lighting, it will not cast any lighting, it will not bounce any lighting, and it's just going to be complete black, like a blocker, right? Now, let's move it outside. So, using translate, just a little bit here. So, we start with having it very, you know, close to the item I want to have. And then, we slowly move it out of you know out of the way while still seeing everything and then it's a matter of where do we want do we want it to be behind this yeah, put it behind cool that now blocks that path right now you can always instead of moving it around you can always also scale it so that sometimes helps if you need to, uh, the shadows to be a little bit longer or if you want to broaden it a little bit so that you cast more deep shadows onto your set, all right? And then you pair all that with moving it, of course, until it's exactly where you want it to be. Well, cool, all right. So there we have it. It's now blocking. Let me just move the camera now to our main cube. It's now blocking the lighting behind. All right, and it creates uh, and blocks the lighting behind. And uh, a cool trick if you want to do this quickly and, you know, add more of these cubes is to select the one you're working with, 
and you create a, um, a node instance, right? Just to be sure, we're going to copy this one, Control C and Control V, use command in a Mac instead. Now that you have a copy, you can look at this from the top view, and you can see that one of them is over here, and the copy is at the exact same position. Now I can grab the copy and move it slightly to the side, and see that? And now we have it on both sides. So we're now casting and generating a shading effect. Let me just do 69. To make this lonely render a little bit more interesting, all right? So guys, that's about it. Um, one final thing, the cubes, the, the, the closer they are to your scene, the sharper the shadows being cast. And the further away they are, the more soft shadows you will get. That's all for today's trick, guys. Have fun with Dash Studio. If you want to learn more about Dash Studio, Master 3D Art, check out the link below. Keep tricking, keep rendering, and I'll see you soon again.